what are the 12 R's that I can begin to yet again apply to my life so that I can now apply those 12 R's not just to the recovery process from abuse and trauma, but apply those 12 R's to how I'm going to thrive moving forward in my life looking forward. So I'm going to take a few examples. One example is the R of reframing. Now, let's just say that you could look at a gnarly, angry argument you had with something in a parking lot over a parking space as, oh, yet again, you've encountered someone who's entitled, someone who's willing to be angry, someone who's trying to intimidate you, and you could feel completely shaken up by yet again being in the presence of someone who reminds you so much of your abuser. And on some level, I'm sure that the parallels will be very present and that the triggers inside of you will definitely be able to be triggered because it will be reminiscent of some, maybe a little bit or a lot, of what it is you went through in your abusive or traumatic situation. I I totally get that. I want you to respect your ability to know, wow, I was triggered and and I'm just feeling the impact of it. I'm having kind of a post-traumatic stress reaction to that trigger. Totally respect that's what's going on. However, in this particular class, what I want you to think about is the ability to use the R of reframing, one of the 12 R's of reframing that situation as a form of self-therapy, where you say, when you're ready, not before. Remember, there's no shame. There's no embarrassment. You're not you're not treating yourself like, oh, I should have done that. Instead, I did this. And, oh, I'm just not recovering. I'm just stuck. Don't, don't beat up yourself. But if you're in a place where you can reframe it, you can say, wow, that is an amazing memory for me that's triggered about how far I have come from surrounding myself with someone who always treated me that way. That w- that was such a moment in the parking lot that it reminded me that I don't that I'm not a part of that type of mentality anymore. So you're reframing it as if it were a gift to you to remind you how far you've moved out of that type of everyday ordinary sort of hatred and into a life where it feels unordinary for someone to be so nasty to you. And that's a really powerful reframing. So you want to practice, for example, one of the 12 R's on a given day as a way of moving yourself into thriving. So now let's take that same example of this argument, this horrible argument in a parking lot over a parking spot, and you say to yourself, okay, I could get re-triggered by this, I could reframe it, you know, I think I'm going to, hmm, which of the 12 R's am I going to do instead? Huh. And you say, I don't remember, but I think I'm going to rename it. So here it's kind of like reframing. I'm going to rename it. That's an R. I don't know if that's an R. Is that one of the 12 R's? It isn't. Not when I was naming, not when I was going through the 12 R's with you. But that's the creative process of being able to say, well, I, I feel like I just want to name it something else. So what I'm going to name it is, man. One of us had a bad day, and I'm not going to step into that person's bad day. So it's you being able to say, I, someone's had a bad day, but I am not going to own their junk. I'm not going to get engaged in their junk. I am going to stay at a distance and not personalize what they went through. And even getting triggered by it kind of makes it your issue as opposed to theirs. And so the, the very act that you have at that moment, the ability to rename it to, I'm gonna let that be their stuff. I'm gonna let that be their bad day. I'm gonna let that be their issue, and I'm not gonna get into this. I'm not gonna be involved in this. And that is such a freedom of defining yourself as this person you are creating as you're thriving and moving forward. And to be able to just watch yourself go, whoa, I turned that moment into something therapeutically focused on me as a person who's thriving, not as a victim of abuse and trauma, not as someone swallowed up with my own triggers of PTSD, which is fine. There's no shame or guilt, right? Don't treat yourself badly. But I took that moment and I moved forward with it like someone that isn't victimized, but someone that recognizes that that was not okay. So you're also not making that person okay. 
Another situation you might say when someone begins to do something that reminds you of the trauma or, or insensitively says something. You know, we've just gone through a situation where Dr. Ford has made a testimony about being raped by um, Judge Kavanaugh. And it's a very serious trigger for everybody who has been raped. One of the triggers is she wasn't believed by the voting majority of the Senate as saying Kavanaugh did this. And she said 100% Kavanaugh assaulted me sexually and tried to rape me. She said it clearly, fully, 100%. That's truth. And um, we can get into that a little bit more detail. That's a trigger though. And for everybody who's ever had sexual assault, including me, you just know on some level that that could trigger everything inside you. The memories of the events, the people who did it, making you feel like a victim, the rage over people not believing her, the same way you don't think they're gonna believe you or maybe they didn't believe you. And it could just like make you revisit every single one of those things. And you know what? That would be fine because then you can do the therapy with the process of it being re-triggered. Absolutely, again, no shame at being triggered. No embarrassment at being triggered. That Those situations are real and what you went through is real too. But notice what I just did. I'm talking to myself and I'm not letting myself be ashamed. I'm not backing away from my truth. I am not feeling weak and like I wanna hide. I am talking to myself and saying, I went through that too. I know what that's like. That was real. I honor you. If I'm talking to myself, I honor you, Carol, that you went through that and that that matters. I honor you, Sue. I honor you, Tom. I honor you, Sarah. I honor you. And I'm just picking names. I'm not saying anybody that I know. I honor myself that I went through that and that it is true and that it matters and I embrace my reality with full self-respect. Not doubt, not hiding from myself. You don't need to tell anybody else if you don't want to, but not hiding from myself. Being very real and very present with yourself. And that is a way of taking a situation that triggers you and shifting it into this thriving, yes, it's still related to needing to recover, but it is honoring the reality of what you've gone through and that, that that's, that's a strength because you're not having to live in your denial, you're not having to pretend, you're not having to hide. You're right out there with yourself. You don't have to be out there with anybody else. It's a whole other issue, but you are with yourself. That is a wonderful partnership and gets me to another aspect of like taking these 12 hours with yourself that what you want to do is to have a profoundly compassionate, honest, patient, and respectful relationship with yourself. So we'll make that one of the R's, a relationship with yourself, being able to embrace you, know what you went through, no matter what other people might ever say or judge or stupidly decide, because you are with yourself and you know the wisdom of your truth and the wisdom of your capacity to be compassionate and supportive of yourself. So you want to exercise that as an intervention in those types of moments. So I'm going to refer you back to the 12 R's of course number two and course number three to just go through them quickly. And if you don't want to listen to it, which is very fast, you can also read through the 12 R's and the paths to recovery after abuse and trauma. They're right there. So you can just like reference them so you can practice having those types of 12 hour interventions available to you when you can take any moment that's triggering, but see if you can groom it and grow it into a thriving self-respectful way of responding to yourself. Okay, see you in the last course.